Hi everyone, my name is Tammy Saleh and welcome to Tennis Tuesday part 2. This is the second part of a two-part episode I did for this week's Tennis Tuesday. The first part I looked at the ATP rankings and the race. Nadal closing in on Djokovic now for that world number one spot. Please do check that out. And in this video, I'll be looking at whether or not Rafael Nadal will break Roger Federer's tally of 20 Grand Slams. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe as I do release weekly content. I did a video very similar to this one after Novak Djokovic won Wimbledon, looking at will Djokovic break Federer's record. Still to this day, that's my most viewed video is past 22,000 views. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll be putting a link to that video up here somewhere and also in the description below. But yes, for this video, I want to look at whether or not Nadal will break Federer's record. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Here he is again. That's astonishing. Rafael Nadal is now closest to Roger Federer as he has ever been, ladies and gents. He is on 19 Grand Slam titles, Roger Federer on 20 Grand Slam titles. It's just amazing, like spectacular what both of these guys are doing. Like, think of it like this, in the history of the sport, which has gone on for well over a century, and if you just look at the Open era, it's gone on for 50, 50 odd years now. In any given period of time, no two other players have, yeah, they, well, before these three came along, uh, Nadal, Djokovic, Federer, the highest was Pete Sampras on 14. And now in the same era, all three of them have surpassed it. We're looking at numbers like 19 and 20 now. It is incredible. Federer, of course, started winning Grand Slams a lot earlier than Rafa. And yeah, this is why the gap between them has never been won until now. I quickly want to add to you guys that this video is not meant to be controversial in any way. I know there's a lot of Federer fans and a lot of Nadal fans and I don't mean to upset any of you guys. These will be just my opinion. I do appreciate in sport it is very difficult to predict anything. I mean, just look at these big three. Did anyone 15 years ago predict that we'd be looking at numbers like 20 slams, 19 slams, 16 slams? It's just un unfathomable. So yeah, like, you know, Nadal could... Injure, injure himself badly or likewise with Federer you just don't know what happens with sport but these will be just my let's say educated guesses in terms of what I feel will happen the biggest gap between Nadal and Federer was in 2007 after the US Open Federer had 12 slams at that point and Rafa had three three French Open titles at that point, the difference of slams between them was at its peak. It was nine slams difference. It has now been whittled down to one. Looking at the age, Federer is 38 years old, where Rafa is his five, year, five years junior. Rafa is 33. Now, before Federer started winning slams at such a long age, the rough age where a tennis player stopped winning really was after he turned 30. He wouldn't win that many more major titles after the age of 30. These guys redefining history. Now, Rafa at 33, he's just won two slams now this year and he does not look like he's going to stop. Let's be honest, guys. We all expect Rafa to win at least one and personally at least two more French Opens. You just don't see how he's not going to win at least a couple more French Opens, that will already put him past the 20 set by Roger Federer. Likewise, Federer, for me, I know a lot of you guys think he is done winning slams. I believe he has another slam in him. Like, look, Wimbledon, despite all the banter and all that, he was only one point away from winning Wimbledon. So, you know, you can't write him off now completely. The draw could open up. I mean, this Wimbledon, it opened up pretty nicely for him. Djokovic out from his half. And then in the final, he, due to recent performances and beating Rafa six of the last seven times, you would have had Federer's favourite if they were both going fresh into that match. But yeah, we were denied another Fedal match. But, you know, that's not saying that the draw couldn't open up again for Roger or, you know, he showed in Wimbledon he can still mix it with Djokovic and Nadal. He beat Nadal in Wimbledon, of course. So, yeah, by no means I am saying Roger is done winning slams. If I had to put a number in, I think he will win one more, 21. So with that number in mind, Rafa just really needs two more French Opens to match it. Nadal was asked about his ambitions about the Grand Slams. He has said that he would obviously like to be the player with the most slams. I mean, like let's be honest, who wouldn't? Uh, and he, But he has also said that I play tennis because I love tennis. 
tennis is more than grand slams now look that is very true i think to do anything like any profession any sport you do need to have a passion and a love for it but let's be honest guys these guys all want that number one spot the the in terms of who's won the most slams this is a very politically correct answer for me but i believe all of them will be fighting tooth and nail to get this record as it is probably the most important record in terms of the GOAT debate. For me, having the most slams doesn't make you the GOAT. It's just a part of the argument for it. But yeah, this is a big part. It's the, it's the biggest part as the Grand Slams are the most prestigious tournaments to win. Looking at just the other big titles, they are now tied. Federer and Nadal have won 54 big titles each. This by big titles I mean the Grand Slam, Masters 1000s and the World Tour Finals. Funnily enough Novak Djokovic is also on 54 so the big three are all tied on 54 titles. Rafa does of course have an Olympic gold to boot as well. I just want to make it very clear as well that this video is not a GOAT debate or who is greater Federer or Nadal. This is just looking at the Grand Slam record. I know everyone loves making everything into GOAT debates but I will be making a video on that sometime in the future so do uh, stay tuned to keep uh, keep an eye on that i will be looking at every stat in detail and give a reflection on who i think or the stats say rather is the greatest of all time this is simply a slam debate for me the landscape of tennis may well be decided next year i believe 2020 will be a massive year i you know we've got new guys now like medvedev really knocking on the door now this may be the last year that the big three are still dominant or it may be that even this year the big three's reign is over they have won the last 12 slams combined it's incredible what these guys are doing so yeah the last three years every single slam has been won by a member of the big three they're still keeping the young guns out but next year could be the year they're de dethroned i still expect rafa to win the french open next year at least which will put him on 20 um australia you know federer has done pretty well in the past like in recent years there so that could be a shout for him and wimbledon will, will be his biggest chance to win a grand slam rafa like i've said earlier i just don't see how he's not going to win at least two or three more french opens and he's shown it in the us open that he can win slams outside of the clay the us open will probably be his most likely slam outside of clay for him to add to his tally i just feel like wimbledon yeah on the grass he has a lot more stiffer competition and australian open is of course basically novak djokovic's backyard so yeah the us open you know he's won it four times there can he win it one more time and match roger federer i believe he will win another us open as well maybe not next year but in the future in terms of longevity i believe rafa will go on for at least four or five more years that will give him plenty of opportunity to add to his French Open tallies and even the, the other Grand Slams. With the French Open, I feel like maybe even in five years time when Rafa is gone, he'll do, you know, he'll just play the clay season. There's no need for him to, you know, completely stop. If he's still doing well on the clay, he could easily play Madrid, Rome and then the French Open every year and pretty much take the rest of the year off. Roger Federer has done kind of the reverse in recent years where he's not played the French Open a couple of times. And yeah, Rafa, there's a funny thing. I believe 10 years ago or something, Almagro said that this guy will still be winning French Opens at the age of 40. You know, he meant it as, you know, as a joke. He was just angry with himself at that point. It could very well come into fruition here. I'll quickly look at the head-to-head -head between uh, Roger and Rafa. Rafa leads the head-to-head 24 and 16. However, on two of the three surfaces, Federer has the, has the lead. In the hard courts, Federer is 11-9 ahead. On the grass, Federer is 3-1 ahead. On the clay, however, Rafa just, yeah, he owns Federer. He is 14-2 ahead on the clay. In terms of finals they've played, Rafa is 14-10 ahead. And also in the Grand Slams, Rafa is 10-4 ahead. However, six of those wins do come in the, on the French Open. I leave it there for today. The question I want to ask you guys is, will Rafa break Federer's record? Is it a certainty? Is it a 50-50? Or no, Federer is still going to end with the most number of Grand Slams. Please do leave a comment below. I love hearing what you guys have to say. And if you've enjoyed this video, like always, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much.